So let's discuss the org shape a bit more, or the shape org as you can see it more commonly referred to with the naming in Maya. I will use both of those terms probably um, because I'm more familiar with it as the org shape and I feel like that <laughs> rolls off the tongue a bit easier. So just as a heads up, if I'm saying shape org or if I'm saying org shape, um, I'm talking about the same thing. So as I mentioned previously, the org shape is created usually when you have a deformer on your mesh. So let's just graph out this and make sure that you can see here, we only have, it's connected to the shading group. I'm going to remove that just for now. So you can see, we basically have our cube shape and we have our cube transform. So now let's just add in a cluster on this and we end up with a bit more data here now. So let's just organize this. We can get rid of our this um, and we can just get rid of our sets. We don't really need those right now. So what we can see now is we have created our cluster deformer. So if I just do five again, you can see that we have this is our cluster deformer and our cluster handle. So which will move around everything and just do that so we'll have all of that so i'm just going to put that up here so that we have this nicely here uh, we can see that the cluster basically outputs the the geometry and puts that into the in-mesh everything that we've seen so far with the shape um, thing you can also see now that we get the tweak coming up here as well now this is basically because anytime as we previously saw, um, when we were modifying the vertices, that would actually work on top of the original shape. So, or like the, the actual shape data on that mesh, right? So it was like, we see we have these two selected and we have values here now, but if I zero these out, they will go back to the original shape. So. Anytime that you're actually doing that on, on a mesh that has a deformer on it, all of that data will be stored with the tweak node and which in itself is almost sort of a deformer where you can turn on and off these things. So just a, a slight note on that, um, but let's just remove this for now. So for that, um, I'm not going to cover the tweak that much more. So I'm just going to remove it now just for clarity. So what is the shape node? So the org shape node? Well, basically what it is, is that think of what a deformer actually needs to do. So what I've done now is I've, I've taken the cluster, right? And I moved it up. Let's just say that I move it 1.5 units in, in all axes. How does the deformer actually know that this is the intended result of where the shape needs to end up? Because remember that the cluster actually feeds into the shape. It doesn't really know uh, about where it started because it's the it's flowing in this direction. And that's basically where the org shape comes in. The org shape is basically a duplication of your, your original shape that's why it's called the P cube shape one org, because it's the original state of your, uh, of your shape when you created a deformer on it. So basically this is a record of exactly where the vertices, where all of these things starts out. And that's basically feeds into the cluster to then do all of the calculations so that the cluster will know by the movement that we're given it that we want to do uh, a, a deformation of translating all the points in x, y, and z by 1.5 units. But it needs to know from where. So it needs to have a starting point so that it can know how much or to where it needs to change these points. So if we actually select this, uh, we can go into the object display and there's uh, an option here called intermediate object. If we turn that on, we can actually see this object show up. We can see the shape. And that's to 
this will also show up if you now go into and show the displays, uh, sh sorry, show the shapes. So that's just a, a quick little thing to know about there. You can see it's still visible now, but if I just turn that on and off to refresh it, it's now gone. So normally this is an, a node basically in Maya where Maya is saying, Hey, don't worry about this. This just works in the background. I'm going to delete. Oh, sorry. I'm going to hide this for you. So, but just for our purposes, let's, um, let's open it back up here again and let's just go back to here and focus on this a bit. So let's just kind of validate what we're saying here by, you know, if I take a locator and I push that here, I'm just going to turn off shapes now. And if I parent the locator underneath here and I match that up to the exact same point between these, you can now see that this point of course has moved exactly 1.5 in all of these units. You know, I can, I can even go and say, you know, I can connect in the, uh, where is it? The connection editor. If I took the translation from the cluster and I put that into the translation for my locator, uh, these are going to match up a hundred percent, right? Because it's exactly that offset that we're getting, right? So that's the same thing as like, if we start down here, we're going to end up there, here, here. So that's pretty much the main idea of the org shape. It is to store the original points so that the formers can know where they need to start their calculations from. So and kind of building on what we talked about previously as well, we said that basically any shape data we can manipulate. So does that mean that we can manipulate the org shape? Well, yes. So if we actually select the org shape and I just select the vertices here now, you can see that I can actually change this behavior. So I can change the starting point. And even if I put this up here and if I take my locator now and I snap it up here, you can see that we still have that same offset because what we've really done is that we've changed the starting point of the shape. We've changed where the calculations, where the deformation calculations are starting from completely. Uh, I'm just going to clean up here a bit. I realized it was a bit messy in the outliner or sorry, in the node editor. So this is something that can be extremely useful because what's happening is because we're just changing the original starting points, we still have all of the deformers that we might have on here, right? We haven't, nothing's happened to the, the cube, sorry, the cluster that we have on here. So this basically means that no matter how many deformers you have on, if you've got a skin cluster, if you got a, a delta mush, you got a blend shape and you've got a bunch of different weighting painting going on, it doesn't matter. You can start to change the original um, shape here. And we'll look a bit more into that in the next video as well. But this is something that I've used all the time in production. A lot of times it's been very, very helpful to be able to update rigs without having to rebuild, them, especially if you're on a tight deadline, this can be an actual lifesaver. So just to kind of like finish off this um, kind of section here a bit, didn't I originally at the beginning of this week say that, you know, everything's a node and everything's pretty much connected. Nothing really kind of lives on its own. So why aren't we seeing this shape org being part of this deformation graph here? You know, even if I, I take the P cube shape here again, and if I do this and I graph it, the shape org always kind of ends out on its own on, on the sidelines. Why isn't the data from this piping in here? How, how can the modifications that we do here actually impact this if it's not connected? Well, it is. But, um, it's something to be aware of is if you go to show the show auxiliary nodes is turned off usually by default, I believe. So 
what that basically does is that it hides a lot of nodes that Maya uses internally that it basically thinks this isn't important for people. So if we turn that on and we graph again, we can now see that we have more nodes here going on. And we can actually see that the shape org actually starts at the at the beginning of this deformation graph. So if I just I can start from the shape org and just graph out there, we can then see how all of this kind of travels through. So you can see that the shape org actually goes into this group parts node and that goes into our tweak. The tweak goes into our cluster group. Uh, again, another group parts node. And then that goes into the input of our, the input geometry of our cluster node, which in turn does all of the calculations and then outputs that as a geometry to our in mesh. The group parts node is basically just a bit of a container that tells Maya which parts of a geometry these, um, these different uh, deformers and everything are kind of acting on. So we won't be going into too much detail about these uh, for now. Um, I, I don't think we'll cover them at all, but just as a heads up. Um, so if you see them, don't go deleting them or mess too much with them unless you do a lot of testing on that.